Palm Olive Soap, your beauty hope, and Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair bring you Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden. <laughs> Most people, a warm May day suggests a drive in the country or a leisurely picnic. But to our Miss Brooks, who teaches English at Madison High School, it has a far different significance. Yes, indeed. To me, a warm May day means just one thing. Mr. Conklin, our beloved principal, is putting the heat on. Uh Some people feel that Mr. Conklin makes his teachers miserable because of his thoughtlessness. I don't agree. You can't make so many so miserable so often without giving it plenty of thought. <laughs> oh, but perhaps I'm being too harsh in my judgment. A principal's life can't be all a bed of roses either. There must be many nights which he spends tossing and turning in his bed until the wee small hours, hoping, planning, thinking, saying to himself, what can I do to them this week? <laughs> During a free period last Friday morning, his nocturnal efforts seemed to have borne fruit. He started an impromptu quiz without prizes. Miss Brooks. Uh-huh. Oh, yes, Mr. Conklin? Conjugate the verb strive, please. Strive? Uh, strive, strove, striven. Now, thrive. Thrive. Thrive, throve, thriven. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> really, Mr. Conklin, these sudden little tests are quite disconcerting. I don't uh, see... Silence, Miss Brooks. We're not finished. Yes, sir. More verbs? Five. Five. Five, foe, fiven. <laughs> now, wait a minute, Mr. Conklin. Five isn't a verb. Uh, thank you, Miss Brooks. I knew my visit to your room would produce some valuable bit of information. <laughs> now, my main reason for dropping in, however, was to ask you to do me a favor, Miss Brooks. As you know, Sunday is Mother's Day. Yes, I know, Mr. Conklin. Thanks to a special savings plan I started in February, I was able to send my mother a card this morning. (laughs) But what did you want me to do for you? I'd like you to take this package home with you and keep it until Sunday morning. It's a little Mother's Day remembrance for Mrs. Conklin, and I don't want her to stumble upon it before time. Wonderful woman, Mrs. Conklin. And she's trained our daughter, Harriet, to be a duplicate of herself. Really? Yes. Yes, between them, they're the two biggest snoopers in the county. <laughs> that makes it unanimous. Uh, I mean, I'll be happy to keep the package for you. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Brooks. I hope my daughter Harriet remembers Mother's Day. Lately, she's had her mind on nothing but that moronic manager of the baseball team, Walter Denton. <laughs> uh, Walter isn't so bad, Mr. Conklin. Of course, he's not a brilliant student. Brilliant? Walter Denton is Madison's gift to subnormality. (laughs) The thing that annoys me most is the way he bounces. He never goes anywhere. He always bounces there. Hiya, Miss Brooks. I just thought I'd bounce in for a minute. (laughs) Well, if it isn't the human handball. Oh, hello, Mr. Conklin. If I'm interrupting anything, I'll just bounce along No, Walter. Mr. Conklin was about to dribble back to his office. (laughs) That is, you were finished with me, weren't you, Mr. Conklin? Quite. Good morning, Miss Brooks. Goodbye, Mr. Conklin. Hasta la vista, Mr. Conklin. I learned that in Spanish. It means see you later. Oh. Well, no se lo veo a usted primero. Oh. What does that mean, Miss Brooks? That means not if I see you first. <laughs> now, what can I do for you, Walter? Well, I need some advice, Miss Brooks. And as is my won't when I want advice, I've hied myself to my favorite English teacher. And for that matter, my favorite any kind of teacher. Are you sure it's only advice you want? Oh, sure, Miss Brooks. It's about a Mother's Day gift, but a very special type of mother, Miss Brooks. That is, well, I know it's impossible right now, but just for supposition's sake, suppose you woke up one day and found yourself a mother. I have a mother. Of course, she's miles away, but you know... <laughs> No, Miss Brooks, I didn't mean it that way. I mean, if you awoke to find that you were a mother. Now, what would your first question be? What did it weigh, Doc? (laughs) Are you sure, Miss Brooks? Are you quite certain you wouldn't say, how is my husband? Not me. I might say, who is my husband? (laughs) No, I'm serious, Miss Brooks. My dad told me that was my mother's first concern after she knew that I was all right. You know, she thinks of us constantly and never of herself. But me, 
What do I do in return? I, I don't get out of bed when she wakes me. I leave my clothes all over the house. Uh, Sunday's Mother's Day, Miss Brooks, and I've got to make it up to her. Well, that's pretty short notice, Walter, but I have a suggestion for you. You have? Yes. Sunday morning, wait till your mother starts to make breakfast. When you're sure she's in the kitchen, close the door quietly behind her. Then? Then gather up all the clothes that you've scattered around the house. Then? Then put them in a big suitcase. Then? Then run away from home. <laughs> oh, I'm just teasing you, Walter. There's only one way you can make your mother happy, and that's by turning over a new leaf. Well, I'll try, Miss Brooks, but meanwhile, uh, just supposing again, oh, uh, what kind of a present would you like if you were a mother? Oh, I wouldn't care much about presents, Walter. I'd just be happy if I had all my beloved children around me. Gee. Well, of course, my mother only has this one beloved child. <laughs> me. <laughs> uh, but it is a lovely sentiment. However, I'd still like to figure out a little gift of some sort. Uh, what would make a young mother like yourself happy? A young father like Mr. Boynton. <laughs> <laughs> oh, which reminds me, Walter, it's time for me to get down to his laboratory and pick him up for lunch. Oh, did he invite you for lunch today? Of course he did, about ten minutes from now. <laughs> Tell me, Walter, were you able to find out what kind of a gift she'd like? I couldn't find out a thing, Harriet. But we've got to get her something. What's the good of naming Miss Brooks our mother away from mother if we can't surprise her with something she wants? Gee, I'm sorry, Harriet, but all she'd say was that she'd be happy with all her beloved children around her. And she was kidding, of course. I hope. <laughs> kidding? She wasn't kidding. She meant us. Oh. Now, let's see. We'll organize a committee to pick out a gift and give it to Miss Brooks. Great, Harriet. Then tonight we'll officially become Mother Away from Mother's Day night. Well, now that we're finished with lunch, Miss Brooks, I, I've got a surprise for you. Surprise? What is it, Mr. Boynton? Uh, yes. You're picking up both checks. No. <laughs> I'm picking up both checks. No. Then I give up. Uh, Miss Brooks, I want you to meet my folks. Why, Mr. Boynton, you've only known me for five years. This is so sudden. <laughs> I just found out they were coming to town myself. You see, they usually spend Mother's Day with my married brother, but Mom decided that this year it's my turn. To do what? Oh, your turn to spend Mother's Day. <laughs> That's right, you... You'll love my mother, Miss Brooks. She used to be a school teacher too, you know. As a matter of fact, she worked herself up until she was a principal. You got to get pretty worked up to be a principal. <laughs> oh, I'm I'm sure we'll get along splendidly. And you'll be crazy about my dad. Oh, what a sense of humor he's got. He's the one who told me the joke about the quiz master who called out, "I've got a lady, doctor," but before he could ask her any questions, she stuck a thermometer in his mouth and took his pulse. Isn't that a scream? <laughs> Father sounds like more fun than a barrel of nothing. <laughs> but may I ask you a rather personal question about your folks? Oh, certainly, Miss Brooks. What is it? How long did they go around together before they were married? Nine years. I see. <laughs> folks believed in long engagements in those days, I guess. Hmm? Oh, they weren't engaged until six weeks before the wedding. Six weeks? Mm hmm. Once Dad makes up his mind about something, he's greased lightning. <laughs> could have used a little greasing the first eight years. <laughs> well, I'll certainly be looking forward to seeing them, Mr. Boynton. When are they arriving in town? Oh, this afternoon, Miss Brooks. I'll have to check them into a hotel for the weekend. I've just got a small bachelor apartment. Yes, I know. You've told me about it. <laughs> Maybe your folks would like to drop over to my place tonight. I'm sure my landlady, Mrs. Davis, wouldn't mind my dusting the living room a little. Oh, that's just fine with me, Miss Brooks. That'll give my folks a chance to rest up from their trip and have some dinner before they... Uh, before they meet the girl about whom I've... Well, they've heard so much. Why, Mr. Boynton, you mean you actually wrote to your folks about me? And how, Miss Brooks? I've written them many times about how gay and youthful and exuberant you are. I am? You, I mean, do you have? <laughs> Darn right. I remember in one of my most recent letters to them, I, I said you were more like a pupil than a teacher. In fact, I think that was a letter in which I described you as a great, big, overgrown kid. Maybe I better take something. 
You should have seen the answer I got from Dad. He said, whatever you do, son, don't rob the cradle. (laughs) Yeah, leave it to Dad. Oh, he was jesting, of course. He loves youngsters. Mr. Boynton, you've given me an idea. Well, what kind of an idea, Miss Boots? If your father turns me down when I ask him for your hand, maybe he'll adopt me. <laughs> Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, will continue in just a moment. But first, here is Vern Smith. Here's wonderful news, ladies. Wonderful, wonderful news. Now there's something thrillingly new in Palmolive Soap's famous beauty lather. Yes, something thrillingly new. Palmolive's famous beauty lather now brings you new fragrance, new charm, new allure. Millions of women will prefer beauty lather, Palmolive, over all other leading toilet soaps the minute they try it. So Palmolive Soap's famous beauty lather now has a new, clean, flower-fresh fragrance for new allure. New charm. So, ladies, forget all other beauty care and use palm olive soap the way doctors advised for a lovelier complexion. Just stop improper cleansing and instead wash your face with palm olive soap three times a day, massaging palm olive's wonderful beauty lather onto your skin for 60 seconds each time to get its full beautifying effect. Then rinse. That's all. All types of skin, young, older, oily, respond to it quickly. Don't wait another day to try Palmolive's Beauty Lather. You'll be thrilled by its new fragrance, new charm, new allure. Thrilled again by the fresher, brighter complexion doctors prove may soon be yours. For new loveliness all over, use big, bath-sized Palmolive in tub or shower. Well, I hurried home right after school and put Mr. Conklin's gift to his wife on my dresser. Then I started to make myself and the house as presentable as possible before Mr. Boynton's parents came over that evening. First of all, I shampooed my hair and set it in pin curls. Then I put on an old, oversized house dress, which I'd borrowed from Mrs. Davis. This intriguing combination achieved the happy effect of making me look like a pat rack drowning in a Quonset hut. (laughs) Then I went into the living room to get things in order. When I got there, Mrs. Davis had just finished vacuuming. Oh, uh, Connie, will you pull the plug out for me? My back's been bothering me lately. Oh, certainly, Mrs. Davis. There. Hey, this vacuum cleaner's pretty old, isn't it? Yes, indeed. But it's held up remarkably well. I bought it in 1932. 1932? Yes. This Hoover came in when the other one went out. (laughs) Well, just so the place looks nice and neat for tonight. You know... I've never met Mr. Boynton's parents before. I know you haven't, Connie. And first impressions are so important. Mm -hmm. That's why I sent our sofa and all the chairs out to be recovered. What? Every (laughs) chair in the house is at the upholsterer's, Connie. But don't worry. Stretch Snodgrass took them down for me, and he promised to bring them back by 6 o'clock. Stretch Snodgrass? Look, Mrs. Davis, Stretch may be a fine athlete, but when it comes to mentality, he's strictly a third strike. Why, he's liable to forget where he took the chairs. Oh, I don't think so, Connie. You know how absent-minded I am. And even I couldn't forget the name of this upholsterer. Why not? Because he has a very odd name. What is it? What is what? (laughs) (laughs) The name. Whose name? The upholsterer. Upholsterer? Yes. Look, Mrs. Davis, the sofa and all our chairs are being recovered today. Well, they can certainly use it. (laughs) Where did you send them, Connie? (laughs) Fellow with a very odd name. I never can remember it. I'm sure it'll come back to you later. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got to get out and back and look for our cat. Minerva? Is she missing again? Mm Mm-hmm. She had a date this morning. A date? Yes, I heard her making it last night. But she should be back by now. She knows how I worry about her. Well, you let me know if she comes in the front way, Connie, and I'll take a look back here. All right, Mrs. Davis. That's funny. Minerva never bothered to ring before. (laughs) Coming! How do you do, my dear? How do you do? I'm Philip's mother. Philip? Yes, Philip Boynton. I'm Mrs. Boynton. But that's impossible. You won't be here till tonight. Oh, well, I mean, come in, Mrs. Boynton. 
You don't have to tell me who you are, my dear. Philip has written so much about you. He has? Yes, he says Miss Brooks wouldn't know what to do without you, Mrs. Davis. Mrs. Davis? <laughs> Mrs. Davis? Yes, honey? That's Mrs. Davis, Mrs. Boynton. I'm Miss Brooks, such as I am. <laughs> We've got company, Mrs. Davis. Oh, she came in the front way, did she? Yeah, she's <laughs> right here in the living room. Well, you tell her she's a wicked cat. And put her under the piano. <laughs> yes, Mrs. Davis. You're a wicked cat and get under the... Oh, no. no. Oh, you'll have to forgive me, Mrs. Boynton. I didn't expect you until after dinner. Oh, and... well, that's perfectly all right, Miss Brooks. As a matter of fact, I owe you an apology for not recognizing you. But it was rather dim in here. Not dim enough. <laughs> but where's Mr. Boynton? Or should I say, where are Mr. Boynton's? Or Mr. Boynton? <laughs> well, they had a little trouble parking the car, and I wanted to meet you myself first anyway. Philip's written so much about you. You must see an awful lot of each other. Well, we do teach at the same school. I understand you were a teacher at one time, Mrs. Boynton. Uh, yes, indeed, for many years. Oh, it's remarkable. You still look so well-fed. Uh, you four. <laughs> May we come in? Oh, it's the boys. Hello, Philip, my dear. Hello, Mom. Well, I see you two have met. Yes, indeed. We're old friends by now. Well, here she is, Dad. You slip me five, my dear. Five what? Oh, fingers. <laughs> How do you do, Mr. Boynton? Well, I do pretty well for an old codger. Old codger? A codger that time, didn't I? See, <laughs> <laughs> see, I told you, what a sense of humor. <laughs> <laughs> He's hot stuff, all right. <laughs> hey, Phil's written is all about you, my dear. I hear you're just like a mother to Miss Brooks, Mrs. Davis. This house dress has got to go. <laughs> this isn't Mrs. Davis, Harvey. It isn't? Oh, of course not, Dad. This is Miss Brooks. Uh, Why are we all standing out here in the hall? Yes, let's all go in and stand in the living room. <laughs> Follow me, please. Well, here we are. Now then, Mrs. Boynton, if you'll just come over to this lamp, that's a very comfortable place to stand. <laughs> Mr. Boynton, you stand over there by the piano. I don't understand, Miss Brooks. Where are all the chairs? They're out being recovered. I didn't expect you for hours yet, Mr. Boynton. This is a terrible thing to do to anybody. Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Brooks, but it couldn't be helped. You see, there was a convention in town, and I couldn't get the folks' accommodations anywhere. You know how big my room is, and, well... I wondered if you and Mrs. Davis could put the folks up for the weekend. Why, Philip, I'm surprised at you. You know better than to whisper in front of others. Oh, I'm sorry, Mother. I was just explaining our predicament to Miss Brooks. She was saying how delighted she'd be to have you stay for a couple of days. Well, now, that's what I call whopping hospitality. It's a whopper, all right. <laughs> I wish you'd give me a hand with the garbage, Connie. I just can't... <laughs> oh, I beg your pardon. Uh, this is Mr. and Mrs. Boynton, and... This, contrary to popular opinion, is Mrs. Davis. How do you do? Hello, Mrs. Davis. Yeah, good afternoon, Mrs. D. Nice little place you've got here. I just invited the folks to spend the weekend with us, Mrs. Davis. If you don't mind my doubling up with you, I figured they could have my room. Oh, that's perfectly all right. Oh, dear, the upholsterer. You folks must be tired after your trip. Why don't you go to bed? <laughs> only 4.30 in the afternoon. Oh, Mrs. Davis was only kidding, Mrs. Boynton. He's got quite a sense of humor, too. Now, just remember one thing, Mrs. Davis. You can't kid a kidder, kiddo. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't he get off some cracks, Mrs. Davis? <laughs> yes, he's a gym dandy. <laughs> Now, if you folks will just follow me, I'll show you to your room. Or rather, Miss Brooks's room. Well, I could do with a bit of freshening up at that. Oh, nonsense, Mother. You're as fresh as the day I got you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now, cut it out, oh. Dad. <laughs> yes, cut it out, Dad. Oh, what am I saying? <laughs> Please, Harvey, stop. I don't know where he gets some of his ideas. He's terribly original, don't you think, Miss Brooks? Oh, a second Oscar Hammerstein, Mrs. Boynton. <laughs> or to put it another way, the corn is as high as the elephant's eye. <laughs> well, Miss Brooks certainly has a comfortable room, Harvey. Yes, indeed. That shower and a little catnap's just what the doctor ordered. 
Tell me, Harry, what do you think of Miss Brooks? Well, it's hard to tell in that outfit she had on, but once she combs her hair and climbs out of that gunny sack, I'll bet she's a looker. Yes, but what is she looking for? Oh, now, Mother, you think that every girl who meets him immediately sets her cap for Philip. Hey, what's this package on the dresser here? It says, uh, for Mother. Huh, must be for you. Oh, wasn't that thoughtful of Miss Brooks? She got a Mother's Day gift for me when she heard I was coming. I'm going to open it right now. Oh, but Mother's Day isn't until Sunday. Well, you know I'd never have the patience to wait. <laughs> Let's see. Why, what's this? A black sheer negligee. Well, happy Mother's Day. Well, this can't, <laughs> can't be for me. <laughs> hey, look, hey, look, this card fell out when you opened the package. It says, for baby from her goodie. Well, <laughs> so it belongs to Miss Brooks. Harvey, you don't think that Philip would... Ooh, certainly not. He yeah. wouldn't have nerve enough to ask for that in the store. Well, I'm going to find out just where this came from. Oh, Miss Brooks. Yes, Mrs. Boynton? Would you come here a moment, please? Certainly, Mrs. Boynton. What can I do for you? Well, I opened the package by mistake and found this inside of it. A black sheer negligee. There was a card with it that said, For Baby from Goody. Goody? Goody? Oh, that must be short for Osgood. Why, of course, that was Mr. Conklin's gift. Mr. Conklin, the principal of Madison High? Yes, isn't he a devil? <laughs> <laughs> he asked me to keep it for him so his wife wouldn't discover it before Mother's Day. Oh, it's for his wife. Uh, yes, who did you think it was for? Don't answer that. <laughs> I can tell from the position of your eyebrows. My eyebrows? Yes, Mrs. Boynton. You'd better drop them a notch. You're pushing back your hairnet. <laughs> well, it certainly was nice of you to invite us all to dinner, Mrs. Davis. Yes, indeed. It's delicious, too. Oh, thank you, both of you. But Miss Brooks is the one who deserves the credit. She prepared it all. Oh, come now, Mrs. Davis. You opened every bit as much as I did. <laughs> Beef stew, isn't it? There's beef represented in it, yes. <laughs> Eat it slowly, Philip. Uh, yes, Mother. Uh, they say your stomach has no teeth, but maybe it's just as well. If it got too hungry, it could chew off your suspender buttons. <laughs> <laughs> he always gets me when I've got a mouthful. Now, Philip, he's such a baby. <laughs> yes. He's nothing but a great, big, overgrown kid. Now, that's funny. That's the same phrase that Philip used in describing you in one of his letters. Well, she is, Mother. You ought to see her around the school. Why, the students just treat her like one of themselves. Oh, yes, indeed. We kids have some great old times together. Oh, I'm glad. I like Philip to have lots of youthful friends. The younger, the better. Well, they don't come much younger or better than Miss Brooks, Mother. Well, thank you, Mr. Boynton. Call me Philip tonight. <laughs> I'll answer it, Connie. Excuse me, folks. I wonder who that could be. Well, come in, please. Good evening, Mrs. Good evening, Davis. Mrs. We're Davis. a committee. Who is it, Mrs. Davis? Mrs. Walter and Harry and Connie. I'll bring them in. Oh, we didn't mean to disturb you, Miss Brooks. Oh, that's all right, Walter. I was just telling the folks how informal we are at Madison. Mr. and Mrs. Boynton, may I present Walter Denton and Harriet Conklin? Hey, how do you do? Boynton. 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 How are you? And now, Miss Brooks, we would like to present something to you that expresses the devotion and reverence felt toward you by the entire student body. What is it, Walter? It's a shawl. A shawl and a handsome pair of knitting needles to go with a rocking chair to which you're so attached. <laughs> <laughs> rocking chair? But oh, I'm, I'm not finished, Mrs. Boynton. Miss Brooks, you have been chosen our mother away from mother. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go to the piano, Walter, and you sing the song we've written. Okay, Harriet. Wait till you hear this, folks. Hold that water. The B stands for the books. She helps us study. The R is for she's righteous, also pure. <laughs> the O is for the fact that she's our buddy. The second O is... Likewise, I am sure. <laughs> the K is for okay. She rates a bow. 
the S is for her sadly wrinkled brow. <laughs> She's motherly, just like Elsie the cow. <laughs> Miss Brooks, we love you dearly. Miss Brooks, that's me. I'll always be Miss Brooks. Dean Barton as our Miss Brooks returns in just a moment, but first... Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. Tonight... Show him how much lovelier your hair can look after a Luster Cream shampoo. Only Luster Cream brings you K. Dumit's magic formula blend of secret ingredients plus gentle lanolin. Gives loveliness lather even in hardest water. Glamorizes your hair as you wash it. Luster Cream. Not a soap, not a liquid, but a dainty cream shampoo. Leaves hair fragrantly clean, free of loose dandruff, glistening with sheen, soft, manageable, gives new beauty to all hairdos or permanents. Four-ounce jar, one dollar. Smaller sizes, either tubes or jars. Tonight, try Luster Cream Shampoo and be a dream girl, dream girl, beautiful Luster Cream girl. You owe your crowning glory to a luster cream shampoo. And now, once again, here is our Miss Brooks. Well, several days later, Friday night came to an end. As I escorted Mr. Boynton to the front door, he was in a strangely mellow mood. You know, Miss Brooks, I'm a man of many dreams, but more often than not, I find I'm shooting too high. Shooting too high, Mr. Boynton? Well, yes, in trying to find the right girl, for instance... It seems that subconsciously I'm always looking for a girl who's just like my mother. Attractive, yet sweet and unselfish. Well, don't give up the search, Mr. Boynton. Someday you're liable to find such a girl right under your nose. And I think that's a very nice location. <laughs> <laughs> what I mean is, when you gave up your room for mother, I suddenly realized that you're not only attractive, but also sweet and unselfish. So... Miss Brooks, instead of just shaking hands like we usually do... Yes, Mr. Boynton? I'd like to say goodnight to you the way I do to my mother. With a kiss. A kiss, Mr. Boynton? <laughs> yes, on the forehead. There you go, shooting too high again. <laughs> Next week, tune into another Hour of Miss Brooks show, brought to you by Palmolive Soap, your beauty hope and luster cream shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair. Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, is produced by Larry Burns, written and directed by Al Lewis, with music by Wilbur Hatch. Mr. Boynton is played by Jeff Chandler, Mr. Conklin by Gail Gordon. Others in tonight's cast were Jane Morgan, Dick Crenna, Gloria McMillan, Frank Nelson, and Myra Marsh. <laughs> Men, do you shave with a lather or brushless shave cream? Palmolive shaving cream comes both ways. And whichever way you prefer to shave, you'll find that using Palmolive brushless or Palmolive lather shaving cream can bring you more comfortable, actually smoother shaves. Here's the proof. 2,548 men tried the new Palmolive way to shave described on the tube. And no matter how they had shaved before, three out of every four got more comfortable, actually smoother shaves. Get Palm Olive Brushless or Palm Olive Lather Shaving Cream today. For mystery liberally sprinkled with laughs, listen to Mr. and Mrs. North, the exciting, fun-packed adventures of an amateur detective and his beautiful wife. Tune in Tuesday evenings over most of these same stations. And be with us again next week at the same time for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks. Bob Lamont speaking. Stay tuned now for Life with Luigi, which follows immediately over most of these stations. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Thank <laughs> you.